Cisco threat response, Bifrost. All right, this is going to be a phishing attack. Okay, so we know the user was phished. The attacker was very successful using legitimate email account belonging to an employee of a catering company that you've done business with in the past, right? It looks real, it feels real, right? The email didn't contain any active code or malicious attachment, just a link to a website that looked very similar to a portal that is sometimes used for invoicing. But in this case, the invoice was actually a powerful piece of malware. We were able to trace the name of the file that was downloaded by querying our firewall, which intercepted the file and sent it to our cloud sandbox for analysis. Unfortunately, the file, file was already on its way to the victim's asset when the alert came back for malware detection. So, right, at the end of the day, no matter what security technologies you might have, nothing is 100%. Files will get in, right? Threats will get in. And this is where the rubber hits the road, right? You need technologies that are gonna help you determine what actually took place. And we're gonna do that here, right? So let's go in, we're gonna go to Threat Grid, we're gonna type in invoice, right? We've got the name, we're gonna query it, right? Or the SHA-256. We're gonna now pivot into that file and very quickly, we're starting to see things that make us uh, realize that this is bad, right? And one of which is the threat score is 100. We have an internal target, so we know we've been compromised. We see the host name, we see the IP address, we even see the operating system, even the last targeted, right? So that's good, but let's look at things like judgments, right? So we know that the file was uh, convicted by Ant Protect DB as well as deemed malicious by ThreatGrid itself, right? So when the file got sent and detonated, um, the behaviors are what are uh, showing here, right? That suggest bad. So we can see that there's quite a few behavior indicators that were triggered, right? During the analysis of this file. And you can see at the top here, the categories, the attack, and the tags. And this all gives us some good insight into what might be taking place, right? Like JavaScript references, executables, okay, right? I can see that it's persistent or has persistent capabilities, right? I can see that there's remote access Trojan capabilities. I can see that um, there's JavaScript and shell code, right? I can see um, things like um, dropper executable, enumeration. So all of these things uh, are gonna obviously play a, a little bit of a role when I'm building out my analysis, right? I'm gonna use some of these elements when I'm trying to articulate what took place. So Bifrost gives a, what I love about our indicators is it gives us a good description. So Bifrost is a backdoor with more than 10 variants. It uses typical server, server builder, client backdoor program configuration to allow a remote attacker who uses the client to execute arbitrary uh, code on the compromised machine. So it, it contains remote access Trojan capabilities, file manager, screen capture, utility, uh, um, key logging, video recording, and we can see this process 22, and we can see the name, we can see the mutant name, which actually ties into the description. So very quickly, we know we're dealing with Bifrost. We pivot on that first process 22, which is XQGGUYXX, right? Uh, .exe, right? We see some children uh, uh, processes, CMD.exe, there's four of them. I can see that the actual current directory is temp. I can see the file name here, the window title, and here's the artifact six. So I'm gonna drill into that file type and I can see from here very quickly that um, the file is run out of disk. So it was on disk, not memory. I can see the size, which is quite large. I can also see the AV signatures, right? So I know that the file has uh, signatures against them. I also know the SHA-256 and I can pivot from here, right? I can go into endpoint amp, I can block it, right? And that's the key with the Cisco security offering is the ability to very, very quickly take action. You can see these, there was eight imported elements. Th those were these DLLs here, right? So again, you can continue to drill as deep as you need to, to truly understand what took place. Now, as we go through here, we see this little blue icon, right? And this is called casebooks. So I've talked about casebooks before, 
but it's really cool that I can come in here, I can create a new case. I've already got this one called Lab 2. And as I'm in ThreatGrid, I can add these elements into the case book. I can make some notes. And when I'm in Endpoint AMP or if I'm in Cisco uh, Threat Response, I can add additional elements as, as I need to, right? And I can pivot, uh, making your job a lot easier, right? It's, it's very hard when an, an executive comes in and says, what's taking place? I've saw this threat today. Tell me if I'm impacted, right? It's hard for you to determine that very, very quickly. With Cisco Threat Response, you can do that. So you can see here this bits admin executed uh, detected. This is using bits to transfer files, right? Um, and you can see the command line there. It's spelled out for you. You can see it's going to getmalware.com, obviously a bad uh, URL, right? 7777 is the port, the payload, and I'm copying it to C, right? So that's process seven. So let's see what invoked bits admin. And very quickly, we see W script, right? There's WScript helping us out, right? So WScript invoked bits admin, right? And you can see children, there's two of them there, right? There's bits admin and then there's that file that we saw in C. We know that the window title for Windows script is very clear, right? Um, but we also know the current directory, which is temp. What's interesting in here though, is that command line. And you can see that the command line includes the invoice dash urgent dot doc dot js and it's interesting because it's taking advantage of that file extension on windows right by adding the dot doc dot js we don't uh, or windows will show it as a dot doc file right it doesn't show the uh, further extension um, and again would fool the user into clicking that now when we look at the artifacts just below that um, we can see uh, other references there that might be interesting, but let's drill into some of these indicators. So we can look at, you know, downloaded, packed, encrypted, and encoded. So some obfuscation that's taking place. I can see the domain. I can see the IP, the SHA-256. This is really cool, right? I, Umbrella is feeding information in. So now I know that these domains, right, are actually malicious. Again, that helps me make a decision very quickly. When I pivot now to HTTP traffic, I can see the full URI. I can see that there's two here, stream eight, one's head and one's get. So head's gone, gone in to validate I can actually make the connection. Get's gonna go out and actually pull the payload. So you can see between the two, there's very little differences, right? So, um, you know, it's using user agents bits 7.5. The host is getmalware.com. Down here, you can see the get request, right? The actual content type is the same between the two, right? You can see the host is the same. And again, it's using bits as well. When I look at the response side, I can see that, you know, the file type, right? I can also see the actual content type. Now you can see the difference here, right? This is uh, xdos exec. I can pivot to the artifact. I can see that it's payload.exe. I see the size of the file, right? And I know it's 200, status code 200 means that it actually uh, was able to pull the payload, right, successfully. So I've got some good information right now, right? I've got some URLs, I've got some file names, I know some processes that were invoked, um, but let's continue to drill, right? So if we look at uh, script created executables, you can see that there's a couple here, right? Payload, we've already seen that uh, sqgyy.exe, uh, right? We've seen that. Continue to look at some of these registry persistence mechanisms. So here I am going into the run key or the malware is going into the run key and making sure that every time you boot up, um, that file is going to get called, right? So... As we look at some of these, right, you see JavaScript uses WScript shell, right, script contains URL. I see JavaScript references executables, right? So you can see there's a couple of them there. Continue to scroll through, right? Here's Windows IP config. The one above that's process queries, active network connection. So these are some enumeration capabilities. And again, we're going to use some of this when we build out our report. 
So we continue to learn a little bit about this. Now what we have is we're going to come into case books. We're going to hit investigate here in the top right. And that's going to allow us to grab all of these ob observations that we've seen, right? And it's going to now let us know what it looks like in the environment. Now these are Cisco Threat Response will use modules. Those modules could be things like Umbrella and Threat Grid and Endpoint Amp and, and many more products as we go along. But now very quickly, I get a quick snapshot of the relationships between the target and any of those domains that it contacted, IP addresses, right? Um, so for example here, I, you know, I don't show it, but I, I will show it later on that I can see that SVC host actually invoked um, and called out a file, right? So, which is interesting. So again, I can see processes that are, are, are exhibiting a certain activity. I can see file names, file paths. I can see host name, IP address, MAC address. Um, I could pivot from here and I've talked about that earlier. I can search that host name, right? Um, and I'll, I'll do that now because this is going to provide us additional insight into to what might be happening. Right? There's lots of ways of getting the data. Right, You can leverage Cisco Threat Response. You can pull a ton of data right from there. You can build your case books. You can follow that case book. You can see that bottom blue uh, icon there. That's the case books. I can actually feed more information. Again, here's my internal, external IP address, the host name. Um, all good information. I can pivot then to events. Here's all the events that took place. Right, You can see here that um, SVC host is the file name, right? That called that SG or the process that called SQGG. I can see the current username is John Doe. All this is really great stuff, right? I'm not going to, uh, you know, multiple different products or starting in multiple different products and having some challenges around navigating and carrying that information forward, right? I'm able to do that all within the, Cisco security ecosystem, right? So here I've got a clean SHA and I've got some sightings, right? So very quickly, I can see that there's some cloud-based IOC sightings. I can see that this is wscript.exe, right? That's the file name. I can see target information, right? So the host name, the IP address, Mac, file path, right? I can pivot on that SHA, but let's go back into AMP for endpoints because we might want to do additional investigation right there. We might want to look at the device trajectory and get the story um, of how everything took place. So what's interesting is, is that when we go into events now, what I'm going to do is show you some of the things. And, and again, there's just multiple places and I'm just trying to highlight um, the capability of the platform. So here we see, you know, a Windows script uh, launch zipped JavaScript. So this is just telling you that JavaScript was inside a zip archive, and this has been typically used by malware, right? We see bits admin, right? We talk about it's a command line, um, but it's also used, and you can see the path down here to go out and reach out. So it's using bits admin to go out and reach out to pull that file down. In this case, it's showing you that we're gonna execute a fake extension, right? So this is an IOC that says that doc.js or dot doc.js is a fake extension, right? So let's look at some of these here. So we can see that explorer.exe called wscript.exe, right? You can see that here. And you can see it starts with that invoice dot doc, right? So now wscript called bits admin and bits admin then goes out and grabs that payload, right? And pulls that payload in. Okay, interesting. And then we have a couple of IOCs. Now I showed you that in the events tab, but you could have seen that right from here as well, right? So here again, it's just explaining that this is a fake extension uh, that was executed. Here it's talking about bits admin, right? There's the command line at the bottom, very clearly uh, highlights that. And again, you can capture these elements to feed into your report. And then finally, we have another uh, IOC that was triggered, and this time it's around uh, JavaScript uh, within a zipped or an archive, right? Uh, again, you can see the command line. You can see it calling that invoice 1563.zip, right? 
So that zip file contained other files within it, some of which were JavaScript itself. So pretty cool, right? We're getting some good insight. So as we start building out uh, uh, our report, we're gonna wanna feed this information in, right? So before we go to the report side, let's go look up that invoice 1563. We can see that iExplorer is the, the mechanism used to get the zip file, right? And you can see that it's showing as malicious. Um, and again, I can pivot from here. I can take action against it. Um, I can look at other tools if I have them and pivot into them and, and do additional analysis. So some really cool information. I know it goes quick, but it gives you a, a, a pretty good idea of some of the capabilities within the Cisco security stack. So that Cisco threat response, when we look at it now, we've got some information about internal targets. We know the host name, the IP, the operating system. We know the username, right? We know the MAC address. We know some URI information for delivery. Um, we've, we know the malware family of Bifrost. We know that it was a zip file, right? We know that JavaScript was included in the zip file. We know bits admin was being leveraged to, to actually pull the payload down. We know that um, the zip file was executed using WScript, right? And there's some Java there. These aren't in specific order either, right? These are just elements I'm gonna to use to fill in the actual report itself. I just wanted to make sure I captured them so you can see it. And you can see a couple IOCs here that tells us about the JavaScript in, in the zip file. So here we got host name, IP, and operating system information. Bang, filled into our kill chain analysis, right? I want the MAC address. Again, I could have got all the information from this screen, but I'm just showing you multiple ways of pulling the data in. I got the um, John Doe, and I just realized the Mac and the host address I flipped upside down, but you get the idea, right? So here, look at uh, HTTP traffic. So now I know the delivery mechanisms, getmalware.com. I know the IP address. I also know this is email phishing link because this is how it all started, right? As I go along, I know Bifrost is the actual malware family. So I'll fill that in. And then from here, I know that uh, the actual file name and file type is a uh, invoice 1563.zip, and then the file type is zip itself. But I might want a little bit more information around that zip file, right? And, and here, it's just showing me uh, clearly that there was JavaScript embedded in that archive. So I wanna call that out, right? Um, from here, I'm going to look at CNC type activities. So I know that there's CNC communications happening to getmalware.com. I know the actual URLs contacted and I know the IP is contacted. Again, this information I can feed into my other security technology and start mitigating risks, right? I can do DNS blocking of getmalware.com. Uh, I can do proxy based controls. I can take that IP address and start blacklisting it. Here we know there's script that was taking place here. In this case, uh, it's calling out that uh, getmalware.com. Over here, we've got the SVC host that actually uh, called out the sqggyruyxyy.exe. I wish it was an easier name to say. So we know there's some process uh, injection. We know registry persistent remote access. Uh, there's some enumeration that took place as well. We know there's one system. We would fill in timeline uh, normally, but this is demo data. We know uh, that we might want to enable AMP on inbound gateways, including email. Even though this is a link, it still would be valuable to have it and disable bits admin. So very quickly, we're able to go through, analyze, get a good idea of what take, took place in our environment. And we're feeling very confident at this point.